Hello friends, welcome to another exciting episode in our corridor design series. In this series, I'll be talking about most of the important tools that I use inside of Corridor. Corridor is a very, very important and vital tool. I've been using Corridor for the past eight years now, and it has been in my everyday life as regards designing, right? I use other tools too, but Corridor has been a big uh, part of my designing life. And uh, there are some of the tools over here is where you have your tool section, right? But there are some tools that basically I don't use them up until this point. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you the basic ones that I use. And of course, you could get one or two things out of these tools. So to start with, um, just um, to put it up, I'm using the Corridor 2024, right? So um, the arrangement might be different based on the year or the version you're using. But if you're using anything from 2021 upwards, it might be somehow similar, just lacking a little bit of some of the tools, maybe like two or three tools. Aside that, you're good to go. So let's jump right in. So the first one I would like to explain is this first tool here, which is the pick tool. Now the pick tool is one of the most important tool inside of Corel Draw. And I will explain that. Now the pick tool is, of course, what it says it does the pick tool right you need a pick tool to select any of these other tools right as you can see now you can use it and most importantly when for instance now i go to the rectangle tool this is rectangle tool here i click on it and i draw a rectangle i'm just going to draw a rectangle and i'm just going to give it this color of course i'm going to get rid of the outline for instance i need to move this around or i need to it will be very very risky for me to do like this and while I'm still on my rectangle, so what do I do? I have to go back to my pick tool, select it to move it around. The same thing too goes for text. If you type something like text, to, if you type something like this and you need to also move it around, it will be very, very risky for you to still remain inside of your text tool. You have to always go back to your pick tool. Now the shortcut for that is you pressing spacebar on the keyboard. So when you press the spacebar, but most times it doesn't work for when you are inside of the text tool. So it's very, very important that you just go back to the pick tool, select it and um, move it around. Likewise, any shape that you have inside of Corel Group. So that's why the first tool here, the pick tool is very, very, very important, right? So I'm just going to delete this and move on to the next important tool that I always use when I'm designing Corel Group. The next tool I'll always use when I'm designing Corel Draw is what I'll call the Shape Tool, right? Now, I personally customize this Shape Tool. I give it a shortcut, which anytime I press V on my keyboard, automatically it goes to my Shape Tool. That's why you see that there are some of my fast-paced videos that I use for Reels that I create. I'm always going back and forth, and you don't see me going to my toolbox. That's because I customize my shortcut for my tools. So wherever I am, I just finish drawing a shape. If I want to go to my shape tool, I just press V on my keyboard, right? So probably in another video, I'll create another video to discuss how I um, developed this shortcut or how I configured my shortcut for my tools, right? So I'm um, talking about um, this um, shape tool, right? No, so the shape tool does what it said it does. It's a shape tool. For instance, now if you want to reshape this um, rectangle you have here, clicking on your shape tool and uh, clicking on any nodes, you can see you can create rounded corners from it. If you want just one round corner, hold down, uh, just click on any of the nodes and uh, apply it. Click on this node here and apply it like this. All right? If you want it here, click on this part. And basically, we are just reshaping this um, rectangle with our what our shape tool right good so for instance now shape tool can actually do a whole lot more than that now of course you know in Corel Draw, it's a tradition that if you want to edit a shape maybe a text you need to convert it to curves to have full functionalities of that shape tool right so what i'm saying in essence is that if you want to edit this furthermore what you need to do is go to objects and or I'll just right click. Of course, you can go to objects and go to convert to curve, convert it to curve like this. Or better still, right click like this and um, select convert to curve. And this is what you have. So with this, I can actually delete this. I don't need this, right? And um, 
I can actually turn this shape into something else because now my shape tool has free space to work because now this shape is now flexible but if you don't convert to curve you don't get to get all of this the only thing you're left with is just you doing this and you keep going back and forth right so the shape tool is a very very important tool inside of Corel Draw, right? I used to do a whole lot of things, especially when I'm trying to fix one or two logos and I'm trying to correct things and the shape tool is always my go-to. For instance, I'm going to type something, um, so I'm going to type H. For instance, um, I get tired seeing area as a font. So I'm just going to increase the size of this. Um, probably I want to I want to use this font for the logo or for what I want to do but I noticed that of course this is how this font is particularly if you use angelic child very well you know that this is how this font is let me just give it a color to add some spice to it of course now I want to I want to get rid of this space here and I want to extend this what do I have to do that the shape tool of course but before I do that I have to go to object and convert this to curve right of course now you see that the nodes are now active so i can go over to my shape tool and zoom close highlight this point hold down shift and move it outside like this highlight this point hold down shift and uh, move it outside like this so basically the shape tool does exactly what it does right very very important tool inside of of course if you don't like you can click this Right, highlight this part here and um, hold down shift while you move it up or you can just do this um, free you just with your free hand just align it and position this well you can move it with your arrow keys on your keyboard just like this all right so um, basically that's what um, a few things that I can show you that shape tool can actually do and you can actually do more with it on your own time you practice with it right great so um, the next tool I'll be talking about here that I use is yes the smear tool so I'll show you how that works right so for instance now I'm going to create a rectangle like this I'm drawing a rectangle like this I'm going to give it a color and this time give it red move it so when I go up and I go and select the smear tool this is what the smear tool does so I just probably I want to create um, waves this is like a wave and um, of course i can use this as an illustration to illustrate um, different things uh, maybe i make this yellow okay so making it yellow send it to the back and um, i'm just trying to be creative here right so you can have variations of this and you can have different images just be creative and just uh, make use of this and um, right so you can have all of this done and um, what say you right well i really don't know what i just created but then right so um you can use your um smear to to basically create waves and um out of nothing out of ordinary shapes right so i'm just going to delete this so um on a scale of one to ten maybe i use it maybe like 1.5 so that's the smear tool um another tool i would like to talk about is the 12 tool right so let me just give this a different color like this maybe i give this orange remove the outline right and i'll just go over and go and select the 12 tool like this and i could use to do things like this right just um things like this and just basically distorting what you have already right so if i don't want it to be too um too dense and um, too i'm just going to reduce it here and i'm just going to apply it gradually you can go all up the way down so it does this um it does also what um, the um, what's it called the smear tool does but just uh, in a different way right so you can use this also non-destructively when you bring this down you can reduce the value to like six and um, maybe you start gradually on the edges and um, 
you won't see the effect too much just uh make good use of it and um, basically that's what it just does uh, not one of the top 10 tools that i always use but it's still part of the tools that i use inside of color draw right so uh basically inside here i don't use any other tool again except for that and that's all right so uh let's go to the next one which is the crop tool so for the crop tool um to illustrate this i'm just going to go to my next page and i'm going to use pictures right because most times i use it to just crop pictures inside of color draw so for instance now i'm looking at this image maybe i want to get rid of this aspect now this is how the crop tool works so the first thing you need to do is select the crop tool right and make sure before you select the crop tool you are highlighting what you want to crop right don't just go um free free mode and select the crop tool and just crop because if you do this and press enter you're going to crop the entire thing inside of your drawing page and you're not going to find anything again right so what you want to do is select the image you want to crop and um, click on the crop tool and uh, just draw over the areas that you still want to see like i want to see see these areas like this when i finish i can either press enter or come here to click crop and exactly it does what it does so i'm going to do with this one to select this area like this this can really come in handy when you're preparing your passport photographs and you need to just crop some areas out and just get rid of them and click on crop like this and boom there you go it has gone so i'll just press ctrl z so that's the crop tool used to crop right so the next tool i would want to talk about is uh, of course you can actually use your shape tool to, to crop and this is what i mean so on pictures like this you can of course if you watched my videos on how i design my flyers and all of that you've seen me do this several times so you can highlight this point hold down shift and bring it down and this also is still cropping right so bring this down and i've just cropped this image so you have your crop tool and you have a shape tool that almost does most of the tools inside of Corel Draw do similar things to other tools like so you can use them for different occasions you want to use them for right great so let's move on now the next tool i'll be talking about is the virtual segment delete i'll talk about this if i talk about the knife tool right so let's talk about the virtual segment delete right so i'm just going to um okay good let me use this page for it so for instance i have like um, now the virtual segment delete comes in very very handy if you are somebody that wants to really um invest your time in creating logos right if you want to use design logos and you want to use illustrator this is one of the tools that you should make your best friend and i mean it when i mean your best friend right because basically this tool can come in handy for you and it can be a huge time saver for instance now if i want to create um i'm just trying to mumble up some shapes here so i'm just going to get this out of the way um ctrl c ctrl v i'm going to move this like this and i'm just going to keep on duplicating these things like this and um great i think i like this for instance now um, let me highlight all of this and uh, increase this to like 75 i need the outline to be more pronounced okay good i think this is a good way to go all right so when i started designing when i started making logos this tool came in handy for me and because at that point i was struggling to use adobe illustrator so this was just like a lifesaver for me so for instance now you have this and you want only this portion right so this is where this comes in so first thing you need to do is you're going to select all the shapes hold down shift to select everything like this so what you want to do is go over to the virtual segment deletes and what you're going to, going to be doing is highlighting the parts you don't want highlighting it like this once you highlight it it's just going to take it off and delete it and voila if also you don't want this part just click on it and delete it of course you're left with this right so you can use this for whatever you want to make a duplicate copy of it you can turn this around and um, keep flipping until you get your desired results and you can do 
so many things with these two right so uh, i'm just trying to create something something good out of this well you understand what i mean right so um your virtual segment tool comes in handy right for whatever thing you want to do and um, whichever thing you want to create well, i probably have my squares here and i just want only this part right so what i can do is select the two of them go over to our guy here and um, delete this part delete this part and of course I'm left with this or for instance you want um, so i can go ahead delete this part and also delete this part right so you have this you can just get it out of the way and um, give it a nice color here give it a nice feel here most times you might not get it to fill up with colors so what you want to do to solve that problem is come up to this part here and click on your interactive field not your interactive field your smart field good and just click on it right you can click on it bring this uh you don't you don't want to use this again so just click on this and you can give it any color of your choice and of course you can make something good out of this um this way and um uh, This can just be a nice sweet logo on its own right you can just write the name um i'm not going to tell you the name of your i hope i'm getting this right right so just be the name of your company and of course um most time this is what you see online they tell you um let me do this tagline goes here voila we have a logo ladies and gentlemen right so you can see how uh segment delete is very very important so it's something you can actually play with of course how do we do logo how do we pick logo very soon we are going to have series on logo design with color draw right so the tool that's going to help you with that is your what virtual segment delete right so have that back of your mind so the next thing i'm going to be talking about is the knife tool now i'm going to go to the page i have for that which is this so of course most times when you go online you see some tutorials they do cut effect and you wonder how did they cut this text like this how is it like this now the tool you can use for that inside of corel draw is your knife tool so me simply doing this make sure you click on the text first of course, I'm not seeing anything, right? Something going on. Nothing, absolutely nothing. But this is the good part. When I go to my pick tool, select my pick tool like this, click out first, and go and click on this part. You can see what I have created. So if I want to get on creative with everything, I'll go to my drop shadow. I'm still coming to that. And I try to apply some shadows to it. And of course, the shadow is looking weird. Forgive me right so i'm just going to drag this here and i'm just going to put this here like this and boom voila i'm just going to bring this closer um uh where did he go where did he go okay good so you can see how i use this to create this delete effect right so this also comes in very very handy when you are doing your your design a knife tool so you can use your knife tool is not is not only your um let me control z this and um, step this backward now it's not only your text you can use it for you can always use it for your shapes too example i have the shape let me give it a white color and I just simply do this so I can use it to dissect whatever I want and whatever I want to you can see now I have dissected this thing twice so if I click out and I click this this is what you have so you can see how this is very 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 important right this is very very important so you can go ahead and 
create whatever you want to like i'm seeing this i'm seeing a t already right so um your knife tool comes in very 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 handy and um yeah that's about for the hand tool the eraser tool i don't really use it honestly i don't use it for anything right so the next tool i'd like to talk about is let me go to the free page and good the next tool i'd like to talk about is of course the almighty pen tool right so the pen tool is my most used tool out of the free hand tool because it just does basically what all these guys does and it does it even more better right so my pen tool can be used to draw straight lines and connect which you can feel with colors like this you can be creative with your pen tool and there's no limit to what you can use your pen tool to do when you are very creative right is it a logo whatever you want you can easily achieve that using your pen tool right and not just only can the pen tool draw straight lines your pen tool can also draw curved lines for instance now i want to draw a cone so i can zoom in closer and from this point when i get to this point what i'm going to do is just click and hold like this to have this rounded shape good then i'm going to hold down my alt key come back here and click on it to tell color draw i want to continue on a straight line click on this and um, to end it off i'm just going to click here of course this is where the shape tool comes in handy i can always go back to my friend the shape tool and uh, click on this point to make it straight like this right in case you don't get it right and just add your color if i flip this go back to our main friend here which is the pick tool and um, click here and mirror this down you have your nice cone looking shape isn't that nice very nice so aside from that you have all other tools here like your freehand tool that you can use to draw lines you can use to draw straight lines of course you want to quickly draw in a straight line on the parts you can just click and click you just one click hold down shift to draw a straight line and click if you don't want a straight line you can just click and click that's all basically that's what you're doing but guess what my pen tool can also do that too so click hold down and double click and to get a straight line so that's why i would choose my pen tool over any of these two any day anytime right so the next important tool that i like to use is my beast line tool now the beast line tool i use it for two things now the first one is to draw free form shapes so when i go to my beast line tool now this is how it works so i can use it to draw curved lines like automatically curved lines right and i can just simply go and just end it here and give it a nice color right good so i use it to draw curved lines so if i need something and i need to just throw in some curved lines this is the tool i go to that i use the beast line tool right great and now the second thing i use my beast line to do is to um trace out for instance now i want to remove the background for this image my beast line tool is going to be the one i'm going to use to trace out these edges and because it automatically comes with so i can use to trace now i'm not going to spend all my time doing this but i'm just showing you that this tool can come in handy for you when you want to make use of it right when you finish tracing you can just do all you want and do away with what you want to do away with but i have a video on the video up here on how you can remove background in coral draw so you can make use of that that comes in very very handy for you or you can also use this method to remove background in coral draw so basically on that year i use my beast line tool and i use my pen tool and i use my free hand tool right great okay now let's move on the next tool i love using inside of coral draw is my rectangle tool of course rectangle just to create simple rectangles you don't need to stress yourself about that create rectangles give it a color and it's just so basic but it's so important right great so that's it next tool i like using inside of coral draw is of course the polygon tool so when you click on the polygon tool and you draw the polygon like this hold down control to draw a perfect polygon otherwise you are going to be drawing this which i don't know which planet it's from all right so hold down control to draw the perfect polygon like this 
and um, now this is where it gets better so if i click on 20 put 20 here and i go over to my shape tool if i do this most times you see this in my designs this is how i create things like this using my in fact this is one of the things i like i like using my polygon tool for and no other thing so i can double this up and move it at 40 and i can uh, sorry uh make sure you're selecting go to your shape tool you can see how handy our shape tool that we discussed comes so you can use this to create a sun effect and um, you can click on any point here and double this up to create something like this i know you see this online very often and boom remove the outline and this is one of the sweet things you can create using your polygon too so you can make it lesser by reducing the value here to 20 and this is what you get and you can go on and on and on and on so that's the polygon tool guys right so let's move on the next tool i like to use still under this part here is the star tool of course drawing a star draw a star give it a color of course you can come in and with your shape tool you can see that the shape tool is involved in almost every process the guy is just involved in every process inside of color draw right so it's a very very important tool it shows that it's a very very important tool so you can use it to shape it and of course if you want extra star you can do this and right and it naturally comes down to what we just finished creating which is this right so um bright and morning star this looks like a brighter morning star mm, not the brighter morning star i'm talking about this just looks like a star right just like a star right all right guys that's the star too okay um the elephant in the room which is the text tool um very important tool so click on the text to click on text and just type whatsoever thing you want to type and um that, that's the text to go format and make it bold italize it yeah so that's the text too right great okay so my next important tool i'll be talking about is actually inside here so inside of this place i have in fact all of the tools here are very very important to me right so the first one i want to start with is the drop shadow right so for example now i've just used my rectangle to illustrate this and um I'm going to give this a color remove the outline now the first one here is the drop shadow right so if you click on the drop shadow you can apply a shadow to any object or a text and you can change the direction like this you can reduce the points you can increase it more reduce and this is increase right you can also reduce the feather here you make it five uh, or increase the feather the more natural feather of course you also have presets here that you can use for the shadow this is an inner shadow cool nice this one also so the shadow tool actually comes very handy right i love using the shadow and of course you've created a shadow and you don't want to make use of it you can easily come here and click on what clear shadow and voila just like turn or snap it's all gone right so that's the drop shadow the next one i like using is of course the contour right this also comes in handy now um when you click on it this is the menu bar for it so you can click anyone for instance now if you want to contour outside i love using outside a lot so you can make steps different steps right and you can always break this apart break contour apart and um, click out then you can ungroup them and of course change the colors right of course if you are having an illustration and you need to illustrate different shades of i don't know different shades of what okay um different shades of, of of what you want to illustrate this actually comes in very handy right and of course if you have uh, a text um let's say i have big and uh, i don't I wish I can remove this area for my for my font list. I would have deleted this thing a long time ago, right? Maybe you have something like this. You have big nine, right? Um, would this be appropriate? Okay, so I 
and I have this B9. I love this font. Right. So um, selecting the two of them, what I'll do is convert to curve. And first things first, then I would weld it together. Click on this. Okay. So, but before I weld it, right? Before we do the welding, right? Hold up. I'm gonna select this. Give it a different color. Select this, give it a different color, right? So I'm gonna give it a red, and um, here, there you go. So what you want to do is now, um, I don't even need to wear this. So select this, select this, uh, move on to control, and okay, yeah, I need to weld this. So sorry, click this, weld, and come over to control. You can see it's now active. So I can reduce the step, right? So this is one of the cool things that you can do with this. So I can reduce the step here like this. And of course I can always break these guys apart. So no frightening. So I can go to objects and break contour apart like this and select this one. And um, of course I can also break this apart, but then I wouldn't want to break this apart. So what I'll do is I'll use my shape to highlight this Ctrl X and Ctrl V, that's cut and paste. And I'll just change this to a different color. I'll make this white. Should I make this white? No, I'm gonna leave it the color it was. I'm going to ungroup this too, ungroup this here and uh, make this orange, but I'm going to mix the color like this. And I'm just going to make this one. Um, I was hoping to make that white. I guess I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, let me leave this at white, and I'm going to change this one to like an orange color. So you can go ahead and uh, be creative with things using the contour tool. So that's how the contour tool actually works inside of CorelDRAW. Great. So um, let's move on. So the next tool I'll be talking about is the blend tool. Of course, to demonstrate that, I will be using. Um, I'll be using my ellipse tool, which is this important, but then you know how it goes, right? So for example, you have a shape here and you have orange, right? I'm going to zoom in, remove the outline like this, and I'm just going to make another one here. I'm just going to make this bigger like this. So if I go to my blend tool and I select it and I click on this and I drag to this point and create this. What I'm just going to do is reduce, I can reduce the amount of, you can see it has created similar shapes for me, but from big to small, right? So that's the concept of blend. So if I change this to this color, watch what happens. So it gives me the blend from this color to this color. So most times when I have a logo presentation to do, if I want to illustrate my color, uh, my color guide, this is what I use to illustrate that. And I just... It just works seamlessly for me right so this is what most times i use my blend to do and in most cases if you want to do for instance now you have things like this i'm going to give it black and i put this here so you can use the blend together like this right so you can increase it further and um, reduce the size everything you want to do stays in as much as you're using the blend tool right so yeah, so that's basically what I use my blend tool to do. The next thing here is the distort tool, right? Basically, it does what it does. Distort tool. I wonder why Corridor had to add it to this part and not put it amongst its relatives here. But then, let me show you what it does. So, clicking on the distort tool, I can easily just distort it like this. And voila, everybody goes home happy and rejoicing. Good, right? Great. So that's about for the distort tool. Um, on a scale of one to ten, I use it just. I'll just give it a one over ten. All right. So the next tool I have here that I use very well is the envelope tool. Right. So the envelope tool, I would like to use a text to illustrate this. Um, so I would like to use. Just type this, and I'm just going to change this to angelic like this. And I'm going to make this bigger. I'm just going to move this. You can see how my customized shortcuts works best for me, right? 
good so i'm just going to have this and when i go over to my envelope to at first it looks weird and um, it doesn't look friendly now this is one of the things that i use it to do of course if i want to distort this this way i can easily use this to distort it and um, create whatsoever i want out of this bring this down and bring this down like this right so this is how you can create things like that now my favorite part is let me control z all of this and start from the beginning again when i click on this i'm going to remove this so delete this part delete that node come here delete click on just click on delete on your keyboard and um, click on this part and i can freely move this this way and i would bring this one down here like this i'm going to click on this part here like this and i'm going to bring this down here like this and i'm also going to bring this down here like this so you can see this creates like a flag like effect like the ones you would see in photoshop and um, adobe illustrator so this is how i create things like this inside of you can go on and on and on and get creative with this and probably apply some effects which i'll be going to later on and um, you understand what i'm trying to say right great so this comes in handy when you need to use them sadly when you want to do things like this so that's ladies and gentlemen that is the envelope 2 right now the next one i want to talk about is the um extrude tool right very important tool and i'll show you why it's very important now for instance now i'll just i'm just going to type one thing i'm just going to type the letter a like this i'm just going to change the font um, i'm still going to use angelic please uh, and i'm just going to make it like this so the moment you go and um, select the extrude tool this is like the 3d effects of coral draw now what this has done uh, it has created a 3d effect but you're not seeing it yet now this is a trick now you go up here and select extrude right now this is what i use the most extrusion color right most times i use solid color and most times i use color shading right so if i stay on solid color and i just change the color and i click on this you can see how nice it has it just made it one color basically one color but if i click on this and i click on use color shading this is what happens now you might not see the effects now i'm going to select this color from this color right and i'm going to the next one i'm going to select a darker shade of that color for a nice blend right i'm going to come down here and actually use this you can see how nicely shaded this color is now another thing about this is when you click in on it like this you can actually click in on this edge and you can actually flip this around but i like to do this from inside of this part here and um, yes you can actually move this like this right you can see how moving that but you have to be very very careful right once you do what you're not supposed to do ctrl z but i love doing my own manually so just click in on any point and just rotate it whichever ways you want to so you can experiment on your own and give you a better angle now if for instance this is not what you want you can always go and go to objects and break extrude apart like this and click in on this point and just simply give it a lighter shade maybe i'll just give it this color here like this you can see right I can go on and on and on and on and create a nice 3d effect with just breaking these guys apart and creating something new let's even try that out so let me break this apart now this is standing on its own and all of this right so i'll give this part select this color and give this here and what i'll do is hold down control and click on this black to make it darker right so this is the shade for this now with this one i'm just going to go from normal red and i'm just going to fade it out and use something black like this 
I'm going to apply the same effect to this. I'm just going to copy this here and apply it here. For this, I'm just going to copy um, the color for this one here and apply it here. And for this one too, so it's not looking all pale and everything, I might also apply the same effect here. So click on G on my keyboard and I'm just going to drag from this point here to this color here. You can see how nice looking this is, right? So who says you cannot do 3D inside of Corel Draw? I like to ask again. Right, you got that right. So you can go on and um, bring in some your elements. Maybe make this uh, make this background a red background and um, apply some gradients to it. Right, or you call it interactive fill inside here. I've said that in my previous videos and uh, zoom this out and um, also zoom this out again and uh, also you can go on to throw in some images click and drag inside like this and uh, make this smaller like this right and uh, just bring this here and um, everything is looking nice and easy and um, of course you can there are so many things you can do to this but because of time i would not uh, strongly emphasize the use of this extrude tool inside of this video so i'll be creating another video to show you the full capabilities of what your extrude tool can do inside of corel draw so i'm just going to reduce this and uh, put this here of course like they will say in pigeon design don't set right so obviously there are a whole lot of things that you can do using the extrude tool inside of Corel Draw. so you can see how nice this is um, having the effect, the um, knowledge of um, lighting and 3d texturing in mind you can do wonders to this right what i mean wonders you can go in and bring in some elements uh, um, let me just throw in something to just um, show you what I mean. I can bring in this guy here, drag in and drop it like this. And um, I'm just going to make it smaller like this. And I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay like this. But yes, I'm going to select the text, convert to curve, control Q, or right click and select convert to curves. and. Um, Good. this is the effect right so what I'm going to do is right click on it and uh, click on power clip then click on this shape and voila there you go who said you cannot do 3d inside of Photoshop I'm just asking right so ask a friend to ask a friend that you can actually make 3d inside of Corel Draw. When I started off, I started doing things like this inside of Corel Draw before I started using some 3D softwares and everything. So this was my first base of even creating anything that has to do with 3D, right? So ladies and gentlemen, this is um, how you can use your extrude effect. Now the next tool I want to show you is actually um, that I use a lot is actually this block shadow. So I'm just going to. Uh, create a rectangle here and um, to illustrate that so this block shadow is not like your normal shadow that's just like the one we did before you know this first shadow is like this and you pull it down like this no this is one is not like that this one is actually different uh, so when you go on and select uh, the block shadow and you do this this is what it creates so it creates like a 3d kind of like effect with whatever you tend to apply it on so it comes in very very handy you can also change the color of that which it has created for you so it's very 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 unique and it comes in very very handy especially um, there are some huge chunk of text I see online and um, um, let me quickly see if I can illustrate this um, amazing um, amazing things to uh, happen 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 Okay, so I'm going to use a different font for this. Uh, I like using Morganite because it's quite long. 
Okay, so I'm not I'm not going to um, make this perfect or um, add some paparazzi. Each time I tell myself that, I tell myself you're just joking. You are a perfectionist, right? So um, create this and um, highlight all of this like this, and um, of course convert to curves, Ctrl Q, and weld it together. Right, I make everything red like this. Of course, I want to show you how this comes in very handy. So when I apply this to it, and voila. Most times you see this online, this is how it's been created. So you don't need to go and use one big 3D software and um, you don't need to break your bank to do this. So you can just, of course for the shadow, you can just select this and um, use a darker shade of that color and um, you're good to go. Create an amazing background for it. Maybe, um, what say you, I'm still using the same red. So G for gradients. Do something like this and um, bring this out and uh, just make something happen. Amazing things do happen, right? So this is how you create things like this. And you can just have uh, a realistic drop shadow effect. Um, create this, give it a black color, remove the outline, go over to transparency to select this and select this. And of course, there you go your realistic shadow uh, to make it more realistic you can apply some blur effects to it like this click on Gaussian blur and boom easy peasy you can even increase it whichever ways you want to when you are done close this up and there you go guys very easy to create so I'm just gonna delete this and um, revert this back to white okay so um, the next tool I would like to make use of is the transparency tool also, right? So the transparency tool is, it does exactly what it says, right? To make things, maybe you want to reduce um, the opacity of something, click on it and click on this first one. And you can also, if you take it up, you are increasing the opacity. But if you bring it down, you are restoring it back. So it's important to have that at the back of your mind, right? Increasing it removes and decreasing it brings back. So that's just all about the transparency tool. It's a tool I would also like to discuss on its own, right? So the next tool I want to discuss is, um, let me revert this, good, is the color eyedropper tool. Now, for instance, you need to sample colors from this beautiful looking lady. So if I have, uh, of course, you want to create things out of the color of your composition itself. So just go over, select the eyedropper tool and just select any color from the body of, right? So select this color and you can just basically use it to select colors from any part of the design. So when you select a color, right? Let me do that again. Click on the eyedropper tool. So select any color and you can see while selecting the color, you are also seeing the color code. So select it and put it any way you want to put it like this. Right, so it's basically used to select colors from any part of your design within the color draw interface. Right, good. So um, another tool that is also dear to me is um, the interactive field tool, which it's called. You know it as the gradient tool. So for example, I have this. If I use my interactive field tool, I'm just going to bring this in, and I drag like this from this point to this point. So basically, I can just use it to click on this one put this color here so it's easy and straightforward I can theoretically tell you that it's even more straightforward than what you have inside of Adobe Illustrator right because with this one is very very flexible and I can do I can add gradient as I wish to add gradient at any point that I want to add my gradient and I can even add more so when I double click on this I can even add some other colors here and click on this add some other colors here honestly this is color fighting or color riot right so let me um, let me try and maintain these with this color so okay good right so you can easily mix your colors with the gradient and also this is not everything it does so by default when you click on the gradient to interactive field to if you click on this it's showing this because i've used this right so i can easily come here and delete this delete this 
right and um, of course I have uh, default I almost don't click on any of these things right because I can easily this is radial I use this a lot very well if you've been watching uh, my videos on how I create my flyers you will see when I use this very very often so it's it's a smoothing things up you can click this you can see how and uh, you can re revert it to the default and you can easily flip colors you can see this one is now inside you can flip it back outside again right so this is um, the gradient too so the last one i want to be talking about is actually the smart fill too now most times this is what i use the smart fill tool to do so for instance i am designing uh, a logo right so i draw this and i'm going to draw this and uh, good maybe i want only this part right i'm still going to take time to talk about all of these tools one after the other right so probably i want to i want only this part that this guy has created and i want this my smart field tool can also look also work for that so if i create on the smart field tool i can easily just click here and voila i'll just drag it out that's all or probably i don't want that part i want this part here clicking on it like this creates it for me clicking on this clicking on this what i have successfully done is what you find inside of adobe illustrator i've forgotten what they actually call that yes i remember it's called divide so when you use your divide inside of adobe illustrator this is what you create right so you can you can be creative with this and do something creative using this right so basically this is what um these are the tools i use in my everyday designing when i des when i'm designing with corel draw yeah so this is what i use so um in the next video or in the next series of videos i'll be talking about these tools individually so we have enough time to know more about these tools so as a beginner you have a chance to really use these tools and know what and what and what not to use this tool to do so if you've not subscribed to my channel this is the right time to subscribe to my channel hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the post notification so you miss any videos i'll be dropping in time for now i love you guys i'll see you in the next video bye